Hey guys, so this uh, this New Holland uh, N14 STC engine, um, he's got complaints of oil pressure fluctuation, and when it does that, the RPM goes erratic, which makes a bit of sense because they got that uh, oil control uh, module there, and that's what meters and times your injectors and stuff. So. He gave me his uh, complaint and it sounded super intermittent. I wasn't sure I'd be able to duplicate it. So then I came here the other day and I snapped a gauge onto my oil pressure uh, galley there and took a reading and it would go up to 80 PSI or whatever, cold engine oil. And then uh, it just, not quickly but it it would drop down pretty gradually within i don't know 30 seconds down to about 10 psi which for a cold engine with cold oil uh, it should be staying up higher a lot longer so then i kind of thought well maybe something's up with this oil pump so there's a regulator in there um, like a high pressure relief as well as a regulator and i was going to change the regulator but uh, I pulled this uh, pickup tube off here the other day and uh, that pump all the gears are pretty heavily pitted I just used a mirror to check up in there while I barred it over and it doesn't look very good so customer said let's change it and that way it'll come with the new regulator relief valve and all that but it almost seems like a relief or something's popping and then it's just flowing over rather than closing back up and so hopefully i'm on the right track he did have that uh, stc oil manifold rebuilt um by some guys in swift current at a diesel shop um and it's got new injectors in it uh probably two or three years ago from another guy so i'm not suspecting an oil leak up there and just based on how quickly the oil pressure dropped, I was kind of limited to how much I could run it and test. But I think we're on the right track here, so we'll see what happens. However, she's a snowy, cold frickin' morning. It's like, it's still like minus 24 or something. They keep saying it's going to warm up, but man, oh man, it's, it's cold. Um, but anyway, I was getting stuck coming in here. Um, some of these snow drifts are a little deeper and super powdery there. But uh, I think in their other shop, they got a skid steer. So I might just walk around and go to that other building and, and move some snow here. So, well, that is better. So, got to do what you got to do sometimes, I guess. Got a nice little trail out of here. So, let's get to it. Okay, well, <clears throat> I'll get some wrenches here, I guess, and we'll, I like taking this charge pump off first, or maybe not a charge pump, lube pump, or whatever the hell it is. I've just found it's way easier than taking it with this stack, because this freaking hose back here is stiffer than hell, and if you don't have to take it off, you can just pry it out of the way, that is ten times better. 
So that's what I am going to try and do. Frick, it's cold out. Okay. Uh, Three quarter for those. Um, and then my oil lines. take these things loose like this but it's just cold and I don't feel like fighting with them by hand and I don't want the fittings to be turning on me and shit like that so I'm just gonna do her this way but I don't always resort to the air impact air hammer right off the bat Here's my uh, nut wrecking spanner, as uh, they call it on Mr. Warren's channel. <laughs> I think that's funny. Yeah. Can't even wreck that nut with it. Yeah, that Warren, man, oh man, I tell you, that son of a gun can work. Holy shit. He is. He's unreal. Hell of a mechanic, too. Boy, oh boy, he's knowledgeable. I really like watching that channel. Probably one of my favorite things to watch on YouTube, for sure. Um, I really like that on-fire welding guy, too. He's uh, He's got hell of a work ethic and... I might just leave this guy loose actually because I'm not taking this right out so then I can just swivel on here Oof, I gotta keep my gloves on once you freeze your fingertips a couple of times it sure doesn't take much for them to get like aching cold and that's that's the point I'm at now I gotta I gotta keep swapping out gloves for warm ones and I don't usually like letting my truck run but I am right now just so that I can keep a set of gloves warming up on the dash and then switch them out because it's just too not worth it otherwise. Um okay. I'm gonna get this guy out of the way so that I can have more room for this guy. So if anyone's wondering why I don't uh, wait for better weather for a job like this, it's because unfortunately, if I do that with every job that I need to do over the winter, I'll have such a freaking list in the spring that I wouldn't possibly be able to do it all and uh, yeah I mean I just I'll have a hell of a lot to do already this spring and if I left all these things till then and, and spring comes fast around here like one minute there's snow on the ground like this and frick the wind can come up and and it'll just dry things out 
in a real hurry and then all of a sudden you're getting phone calls galore for air conditioning and freaking every other wreck in the country and and uh yeah it'll be busy in the spring there won't be time for dicking around on every job that you put off over the winter Plus, I've already put off a lot. I got a few combines the guys want me to go through. Haven't even looked at those yet. And, uh, there'll be, yeah, there's just, there's always more and more and more. Let's work at getting this guy off. Three quarter. <clears throat> yeah, this one is a son of a bitch. Cause they got that suction line and it's so short that there's basically no flex in it at all and it just sticks onto that uh, thing on the tank on this little pipe that it's clamped to. Too thick. Okay.
Well, I was on the snap-on truck the other day getting some warranty done and like some of their stuff is nice don't get me wrong but their prices have gotten so crazy it's unbelievable like they wanted eleven hundred dollars for a metric set of long uh, box end on one side and ratchet on the other eleven hundred dollars I mean, you can go on a G2S catalog and buy the gear wrench version. Probably half price of that. <clears throat> like, if you are an apprentice watching this, like, don't freaking get sucked into that shit. Like, they got really nice ratchets and really nice pliers, but I would rather have more tools of like mid-grade quality than have a shitty selection of these uh, supposedly high quality snap-on tools i mean they're not they're just simply it, it, they're not worth the money it's just absolutely crazy what they want for that shit and ironically i walk over here with snap-on pry bar but like I said, it's not all crazy and ludicrous. It's just watch what you buy. I mean, I see so many apprentices getting sucked into that shit. And uh, I mean, you, you can just buy so much more other tools for the same price. I'd rather, way rather have more tools than fewer, you know, fancy tools. Like, who gives a shit? Especially when you're out here on the road. Like, frick. You need all the help you can get out here. And, quite often you gotta cut a wrench out here and make it into something else. I mean, I've had to do that a ton. I mean, you don't wanna be frickin' cutting up some $1,100 fucking wrench you bought. You know, but I'll cut my Princess Auto or my, you know, I got a few better wrenches, but I do keep a set of shitty ones, not on the truck, but at the shop for uh, that reason. And if one has to get cut to make a tool, like, I'm not going to cut my expensive one if I don't have to. Everything was so stiff. Oh. Whoop.
there's a little coupler on there and it stayed with the with the pump with the bigger pump i think it'd be out by now i don't really know what we're hitting on but hitting something at the back here there we go grab a ratchet strap and tie that up out of the way. Okay, I got her all unbolted, I think, most of the way anyway. Um, obviously got that hydraulic pump and the adapter out of there. These old gaskets, they stir stick. Five bolts. One, two. Three. Four. I think there's more than five. Well, sometimes you just got to come in and have a coffee, a little warm up. 
Uh, I'm no further ahead because it says remove the five cap screws which hold the lubricating pump to the cylinder block. So <laughs> I got five screws taken out of it so uh, I don't know what's going on. Son of a gun. There's a snap on warranty. <laughs> It is coming. I've never seen one this tight. I don't really like doing that frying on there, especially because on these, this is not just the front cover, this is part of the block. I can't believe that. What a fight. Huh. I really would have thought at the beginning there that I had another freaking bolt in there. And I thought I threaded this one in so that it would keep it from falling, but clearly didn't. Okay. I'm gonna jam a freaking rag in there and uh, go back to the shop. Well, I'll be going back to the shop later today because I gotta go to a tractor. It's a crank, no start. Um, and then I gotta go to a newer Pete 2018 or something that's been having endless freaking electrical problems. Like, I mean endless. This thing's brand new and I mean, I'm learning them trying to learn them um there's that chassis node on these these newer trucks i mean the chassis node's been there for a while but you know that runs like it's just a module it runs all your lights uh windshield wiper motor um, things like that um, a lot of things on the truck goes through this what they call a chassis node and i went and i found like seven, seven of the power wires were rubbed straight on the frame of this truck. And I went and patched them all up. Uh, they were actually pretty close to a Deutz bulkhead connector. So I would have had to like extend the wires. So there would have been two splices per wire. So I just replaced the pins in the Deutz connector right back to where it was broken. Anyway, the, the thing is, the thing faulted again, 
and something else wasn't working on it shortly after I did that repair. So I sent my apprentice there and he found another broken wire. One of the wires that sends power down to that module, he found that broken, um, but in a different spot. So he got that fixed and then he said he was running it to check everything and he noticed that the fuel gauge wasn't working. Well, guess what the fuel gauge goes off of? Is that stupid module. So, and I can't get a Packar uh, manual with the wiring diagrams for this thing. Uh, one guy on Facebook was nice enough to send me some information so I at least know what each connector and pin on the module is for certain functions. But I don't know where they go after that. So there's two fuel uh, senders, one on each tank, but only one gauge. So I, and from the module, that chassis node to the sender units that the wires are good. But that's as far as I can really check. I don't know where they go after that. And I can't seem to get my hands on any more information on these things. So that's kind of where I'm at for that. And then, uh, oh, what else? Now the, the ammeter is not working. And the ammeter comes off that module too. So I was like, well, I'll go there and check and see what you got for power into the module make sure all those connectors that are supposed to have power have it and that's about all i can really do i mean i just i don't know i don't have any more diagrams for this thing and you can't get them and packar won't ever give you any so uh yeah that's kind of i'll see what i can find i guess but i just can't believe the wiring gremlins that that thing has had for how new it is i mean Every single time it goes for a load, it comes back. Something else ain't working on it. So hopefully I can get it working for these guys. But anyway, I got to do that. And then I might have a customer with some kind of damage in the front gear train of a C15. Uh, early model C15. Single turbo. But he hasn't told me for sure yet. He's going to pull his compressor off and see if he can see anything. Uh, but yeah, we'll just see what happens. But should be a fairly busy day today on the road. So that's all right by me. And it's starting to warm up a little bit here. But anyway, this here. So this is agriculture specific and uh i can't remember what's different on it possibly the spline um i can't remember something different about them compared to the truck ones but cummins wants like three or four grand for this thing so i've been buying the pai aftermarket ones and they're for a truck but it's no big deal you just pull this outer cover off and then you push the shaft out. That's what it is. This front nose here, this isn't on the truck ones. So we need this, this shaft to, to go in the new pump. So we just press it out and press it into the new pump, put that back on. And then, cause that one's 900 bucks or something. So, a hell of a lot cheaper they're every bit as good and uh that's i've done done a few of them now like that without any issues so anyway thanks guys Okay, we're back here. Got our new pump, gaskets, 
Well, I don't have these gaskets. I'm going to make some just with some gasket paper. Or I might just silicone them. I'm not too sure. Um, yeah. I just got to get it cleaned real good so that this, you know, slips in there like it should. Because with all that junk around that bore right now, it's going to go in hard again. So I'll set you guys up and I'll get cleaning it up. Okay. So, got that good and clean. Now I like to just take a little bit of lubri plate and put it inside this bushing in front. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Much better. Okay, let's put the gasket on to the pump. Get that ready to go. My screen's a little dirty. I think the gasket's snug enough on there that we don't need to uh, put any sort of adhesive on it. Okay. That's the ticket. Much better.
Didn't hit the oil bucket. Gotta love cold cordless tools. Okay, so I got this thing done. Check the oil already. Um, all my lines are on and tight. Um, hydraulic lines, pumps are on. This thing was way easier to spline than I thought it'd be. I just kind of let it sit up there and then I barred the engine over and just splines caught and slid right in. So, I guess, without further ado, we'll start her up. Make sure no shit over on this side. He said battery maintainer and block heater plugged in, so it should be good to crank. Well, let's see what happens. On this tractor, the starter's got a sticky spot in it, but other than that, we should be all right. Let's see where I can see my oil gauge here. Shut that thing off. Uh, where is the radio in this thing? Always get to play that game in equipment. Find the freaking radio. Actually, know where they got the radio in this thing. Oh, right in front of me. Uh, there we go. Okay. Oh, if you can see that. Let's see what happens. <laughs> down at 10 psi by now the other day a 
You just gotta shut it off and check for leaks there. Well, I don't want to celebrate just yet, but um, like I said, it would have been down already the other day. Like I said, it was about 10 seconds or so, 10, 15 seconds, and it was starting to get pretty damn close to zero there, so. That's looking good. That's good. This is just residual oil. I'll obviously check it closer after I run it for longer, but that's good these two gaskets i just made up with some gasket paper um i think we're gonna be good i will uh fire it up again and i'll let it run for a couple minutes i don't really want to get out of the cab though while it's running just in case it does pull that trick again i'm gonna be in here to Shut it down if it's going to lose pressure on me. Transmission pump lamp went out, but I still got no steering. steering um, well let me see what I can find and I'll update you guys so this pump here is a steering pump so I'm kind of guessing somehow it's not splined up um, it went on really easily like I seated it right up against the o-ring and I did put the little drive coupler in so it's not it's not that um, I just cracked the line there. I'm kind of hoping maybe it's loose or something. Um, we'll see what happens, I guess. If it's putting out a bunch of oil when I fire it up, then you know it's turning. a while but some oil did start coming so I'll tighten that back up and then we'll see what happens so you can see there we got oil coming now but it did take okay Let's see what we got now thing idle for a little while bring it up the temperature a little bit I don't really want to get out of the cab but I'll see what it does here so here we got like 
29, 30 pounds on a pretty hot idle. So that's that's good. And then up uh, 1800 or so RPM. Just steady as a clock there, 4500. Or sorry, 45 PSI. yeah pretty confident that that was our problem boy that sun glare is bad eh anyways pretty confident that was our issue uh, i'm going to shut it down here now and take a look at uh make sure we're all dry up there i did get out for a bit while i was running it and everything was dry so think we'll be all right but looks good to me it's all dry this is a little bit of residual from that big fat o-ring that goes on it's residual yeah, I might spray that with some brake clean or whatever. That's dry. Well, folks, that's a wrap on this one. Uh, thanks for watching.